Webflow libraries are the fastest way to get a design system going in Webflow. In this video, I'm gonna install one of these libraries and show you guys exactly how fast it is to get a design system running and start using their components. First, we're gonna take a look at all the different libraries that are available to you right now in the Webflow libraries. We're gonna take a look at everything that you can do with these libraries. And then we're also gonna see some limitations that are presented right now. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. The quickest way to find the Webflow libraries panel on Webflow is by clicking A on your keyboard. It'll bring you to the layouts panel and here you can see that there's all the different libraries. Now Webflow has their own standard library and if you click into this, this is standard when you start any type of project, you'll see that you get this massive, well not massive, but you get this extensive library, right? You can create an entire site using these components and they're pretty decent, you know, but if you wanted to use something a little bit more advanced, something with a bit more juice, then we go here and click on this browse more libraries button. Now, when you jump onto the Webflow libraries for the first time, you'll notice that there are some available, but it's not a massive extensive library. So for now, one of my favorites out of this entire collection is gonna be the Walsh Webflow library. Now to install it, it's pretty simple. You just need to click on it and then you install the library for free. And once you install it in the project that you're looking at or that you want to install it in, you'll find it here within the same panel next to the Webflow one. So we see here that there's this Walsh library. So the really cool thing about this library situation is that we can simply click and drag any of these components directly into our page here. And we can just start building out a massive site just using all these components. Now you can build a site pretty quickly just using these components. We can actually just click on them, but make sure that you're selecting the body before you click on it, because if not, you'll be dragging it into the other sections. So, so just make sure about that. But once we can start to build this massive site, we see that there are a few limitations with what we're doing here. So number one, we are pretty constrained to the way that this has been built. If you are not familiar with the exact type of way that this person built this component library, then it's gonna be a little bit more difficult for you to change it up. Just as an example, this component library here is built using REMs and EMs. This is my favorite way of building, but if you're not familiar with these type of responsive measurements, then it'll be a little bit difficult for you to understand how to change things as you go on and build your site. But there are a lot of benefits as well. For example, this entire thing is obviously gonna be responsive, uh, all the way up to the larger breakpoints, and then obviously mobile as well. As I start adding more and more components here, we can see that just using our, our library here, we can start to build a very extensive page with pricing sections, with feature sections, just any section that can just help us convert with our product. Now, again, this is a great, great thing. We can build super quick websites and we can just launch this right now and publish it and we can be out the door ready to sell. But again, if you do not know how to go above and beyond what this template has given you, then you're going to be a little bit stuck with the options that they've built for you. Now these components are not the only components available for this specific library. This exact component library has about 99, but if you go into the actual templates that this designer sells, there are a lot of different templates using that type of component library. So for example, we can see that there's a lot of similarities with the Walsh template here that we've seen, and then also these paid versions so that if you do like that type of library that you've gotten for free, then you can see the more extensive paid versions that are not included with a library, but it's from the same designer, same team, so you might like that type of style. One thing to note when you go into these libraries is that there's a lot of different types of libraries. So for example, the FinSuite here has a lot of accessible components and that is their main thing and they have a lot of modals and accordions and things like that. But then if you go into, for example, Walsh or Entitled UI, it's a little bit more styled and you have these components that are very well built, very well designed. But again, you are kind of stuck within that design system if you're not super knowledgeable about how to change it. Now with this example specifically for Entitled UI Library, there are style guides and introductions into how you can change the style to fit your brand, to fit your, your style. But just keep that in mind that not every single style guide will be as easy to change as some of them. Now this is similar to the Webflow clonables that you can get for free or even the paid templates that you can get for free. But one of the benefits with this is that you have it directly within your libraries panel. So you can always go back and forth reusing the same components if there is a specific component that you just wanna reuse over and over and over and over. Now right now libraries is currently in beta, so hopefully in the future we'll see some more libraries come up. 
And we can even maybe start to upload our own to have some private libraries for teams or for your own agency, for, for your own freelancing. So we'll see how that evolves through the future. And hopefully some of the limitations that I talked about will be minimized as it goes on and on and people become more and more proficient with these things. So we'll see how that goes and we'll see how that develops. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I recommend that you check out the Webflow Masterclass course to learn more about Webflow and libraries and things like that. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.